In this video, I'm going to solve the 2017 Civil Services General Studies Paper 1. The whole idea of this video is to give you a sense of my perspective while looking at a problem and how my brain wanders in thinking for a solution. Anyways, I have a lot to talk about, so let's jump into it. So what I'm going to do is I have actually gone through this paper and segregated the questions based on subjects. So I'm going to first cover the geography related questions. Likewise, we'll go to the next one. I have set A with me, so the first question in geography is, I'll not go through the question, you pause and read, I'll begin with the explanation. So in this question we are looking for that spot which acts like a good link between the Eastern Ghats and the Western Ghats. So the first thing before we explore the options, we need to first think of it this way. Eastern and Western Ghats, if they have to come to a point where they have to be linked, then it has to be somewhere in the lower portion of the Indian subcontinent. So at the lower portion we have two states, that is Kerala and Tamil Nadu and a little bit of Karnataka as well because in that spot we have the Nilgiris, okay? So now let's look at the options and take out the unnecessary ones. So I'm going to first focus on Nallamalla forest because I know that this forest exists in Andhra Pradesh and Andhra Pradesh is a little far away from the Western Ghats and if you want to think of it this way then this is also the forest where the former Chief Minister of Andhra Pradesh, Rajashekhar Reddy, died in a helicopter crash. So Nallamalla forest cannot be part of this question therefore we just strike it out. Now we are left with A, C and D. Now if you look at Nagarhol National Park, Nagarhol National Park exists in Karnataka, okay, because of the name, because the name Nagarhol is, is not a Tamil name and a Keralite name. So this has to exist in Karnataka. Now Karnataka is totally towards leaning towards Western Ghats. So we're going to take that out from the option as well. And now we are only left with option A and D. Now moments back I told you about Nilgiris, right? So this Nilgiri mountain, it forms this unique place where three states come into contact which is Karnataka, Kerala and Tamil Nadu. Now here we have an option called Sisha Chalam Biosphere Reserve. Now you have heard about Nilgiri's Biosphere Reserve, right? It's a very famous one. I'm thinking that two biosphere reserves cannot exist close to each other because the term biosphere itself is such a broad term in which national parks and sanctuaries exist, okay? So with that logic, I'm going to strike option D and I'm left with A. So it has to be Satya Mangalam Tiger Reserve. We go to the second question now. Again, pause the video and read. All right, in this question, they're asking for a place, more specifically a beach that has a shoreline which is few kilometers wide and the water from the sea comes to the shore twice in a day. First thing to notice is the word kilometers. Clearly, they mean at least more than one kilometer. We don't know exactly how much, but more than one kilometer. Now you can imagine the distance one kilometer. It's not that difficult. So we have to look for a beach that is a coastal region in India, which has a land portion that extends more than one kilometer into the sea. Clearly the continental shelf has to be much wider. Now we have read in NCRT book, I don't exactly remember which class, but we have read that the continental shelf on the eastern side is much wider than the western side. That's why we have more seaports in west coast compared to east coast because it's very difficult to make a port when the water is shallow. And the land is also lower on the eastern side compared to the western side. That's why many rivers go into the Bay of Bengal. So clearly we need to find the place in the eastern coastal region that is states like Odisha, Andhra Pradesh and Tamil Nadu. Now if you remember, when Indian subcontinent got split from Gondwana land and then got merged with the Eurasian plate, that's how Himalayas were born, if you have ever looked at the picture, there was a lot of land portion on the southwestern side of the Indian subcontinent, which eventually got submerged, few broke apart. And also try to think, near Odisha region, there are few islands very nearby. If you have ever traveled in the East Coast Express, and then Navy also does a lot of missile testing in this region. So clearly our analysis has brought the region near Odisha. So this beach has to be somewhere in Odisha. Now let's remove the unnecessary options. I would first look at the option B and D. These names sound purely South Indian. The ending part of the names gives me that vibe. So strike out B and D. Now option A and B, I have no clue where they are. And that's the whole point of this analysis. Assume you don't know the place, even if you know it. Now I will look at option C, Chandipur. Now being a Bengali, and if you have ever noticed the names of places near West Bengal, Odisha and Bihar, many places are named like Chandapur, Tejpur, Bahadurpur, Birampur, Fatehpur. So there's a lot of Purpur in the names of the places. With that I can definitely narrow down my answer to option C. And about Bhavnagar, I still don't know where it is, I just looked up on Google map, it's in Gujarat. So option C is correct. Alright, the next question is, again pause and read. 
So these statement related questions are very common and they confuse the shit out of us. Anyways, nothing to worry, let's go through each statement. So the first statement says, the source of river Tista is the same as that of Brahmaputra, but it flows through Sikkim. Now let's break down the statement. They are asking for the source. It cannot be the same. Brahmaputra covers a long distance all the way up from Tibet and comes into India from Arunachal Pradesh. On the other hand, Tista comes directly from Sikkim, which is in between Nepal and Bhutan. So let's assume you didn't know that. Think this way, there is this massive Himalayan range in between India and China. On Himalaya, there are glaciers which melts and Brahmaputra is on the other side of the Himalaya. So clearly Tista is formed due to the melting of Himalayan glacier. So the first option is incorrect. With that, our option A and D is gone. Now let's go to the second statement. It says River Rangit originates in Sikkim and it is a tributary of River Tista. I have no idea about River Rangit and I suggest you also assume that you don't know it. Let's leave this and go to the third statement. Now the third statement says River Tista flows into Bay of Bengal on the border of India and Bangladesh. I think we can make an analysis on this. So what is below Sikkim? We have Darjeeling and Siliguri. So basically northern part of West Bengal. Now there is a depression in that region due to Malda fault. Now this depression tilts towards the eastern side. So naturally the river will go where the depression is, right? On the right side you have Meghalaya. And right in between northern West Bengal and Meghalaya, Bangladesh is there. So this river has to flow into Bangladesh if it plans to join the Bay of Bengal, which we know it does, just like most of the rivers. So this statement is incorrect. It's not in the border, it's in Bangladesh. With this, option C goes out and we are left with option B. The next question is, again pause and read. In this, they are asking how many states we have to pass through if we were to travel from Kohima to Kotayam by road. Alright, I hope you know that Kohima is the capital of Nagaland. So we are talking about the state which is at the extreme eastern end of India. From there, we have to go to Kotayam. Kotayam is in Kerala. Again, assume you didn't know that. Suppose you are confused between Kerala and Tamil Nadu because any other state would not make sense. So you are confused whether Kotayam is in Kerala or Tamil Nadu. Think of it this way. In the option, we have 6, 7, 8, 9. Let's take the maximum number, 9, option D. The question says, what is the minimum number of states within India through which you can travel, including the origin and destination? So we have to include Nagaland and Kerala or Tamil Nadu. Since Bangladesh comes in between West Bengal and other few northeastern states, so we will have to go from Meghalaya, then West Bengal, near that Malda fault, then we'll go to Odisha, after that Andhra Pradesh, just stick to the eastern coastal side. After Andhra Pradesh, it's Tamil Nadu and also include Kerala since we still have to narrow down to Tamil Nadu and Kerala. Clearly, we have seven states now, including origin and destination. With that, option C and D is out. Now, the final question is, where is Kotayam? Have you ever heard of people with surnames like Korean or Kuryakos? Basically, they are Christians from Kerala. Usually, people with these surnames are from Kotayam district. So part of sociology teaches you about society and its stratification. Even if you didn't know that, think of some places like Kohikod, Kochi, which we know are in Kerala, and now Kotayam. So there is some sound resemblance that can guide you about the origination. With that, option B is the right answer. Alright, let's go to the next question. Mediterranean Sea is a border of which of the following countries? So we have these countries, Jordan, Iraq, Lebanon and Syria. I'm going to pick Syria first, since Syria is all the time in the news. Right now there's a war going on in Syria due to which the Syrian refugee crisis occurred. You know a lot of people from Syria have left their country in boats seeking citizenship in European countries. You must have also seen the famous picture of Syrian boy who drowned in Mediterranean Sea and later his body was found on a beach. Clearly with this information we can say that Syria shares its border with Mediterranean Sea. With that option A and B is gone. Now Jordan is a landlocked country because Israel stops it from sharing Mediterranean Sea. With that option D is gone. Let's assume you didn't know about Jordan. But it is easy to think that Iran and Iraq are neighbors. Now we know that Syria is next to water then Israel is next to water and on top Turkey is next to water since Istanbul connects Mediterranean Sea with Caspian Sea. So with this information, how else Iraq can touch Mediterranean Sea? With that option A and D is gone, you are left with option C. Let's go to the next question. Again pause and read the statements. I'll take the second statement first. 
it says Western Ghats are spread over five states only. Now this is not true. Let's count the states from down. We have Tamil Nadu, Kerala, Karnataka, Goa, then Maharashtra and finally Gujarat. If at all you are confused whether Tamil Nadu and Gujarat is a part or not, then try to recollect an NCRT we have read under the topic Features of Western and Eastern Ghats. In that Western Ghats has been divided into three parts. Coastal Plains of Gujarat, then we have Konkan Coast, it covers the coast from south of Gujarat to Goa. And last one is Malabar Coast, it covers the coast from south of Goa to Kanyakumari. So clearly we have six states for Western Ghats. Moments back we had a question where they were asking for a point that is a link between Western Ghats and Eastern Ghats. And we found the answer to be in Tamil Nadu. That means Western Ghats does extends up to Tamil Nadu. With that option A and C is gone. Now let's see the first statement. In India the Himalayas are spread over five states only. Now this statement is also not true. At first it may look right but it is not. So let's count. We have Jammu and Kashmir, Himachal Pradesh, Uttarakhand, Sikkim, Arunachal Pradesh. But then if you see the Purvanchal hills in the northeastern states of Nagaland, Manipur and Mizoram, these mountain ranges are part of eastern Himalayas. With this, it's clear that Himalaya is not limited to five states. And option D is gone now. We are left with option B and that's the answer. And the third statement, Pulikat Lake is spread over two states only. This statement is absolutely true. It is spread in the state of Andhra Pradesh and Tamil Nadu. We go to the next question. If you want to see ghadiyas in their natural habitat, which one of the following is the best place to visit? So ghadiyal is a crocodile. There are three types of crocodiles in India. One is ghadiyal and the other ones are the mugger crocodile and the saltwater crocodile. Saltwater crocodiles are the one that are found near coastal areas because of salty sea water. And mangrove is usually near coastal area. So ghadiyal cannot be in Bhitarnika mangrove. Now you could also think of it like this. It is a little funny but you will see the resemblance. When you hear the word ghadiyal, does it make you think of gharas? which is an Indian name for pot. And there is a reason why ghadiyals are named like that. So these ghadiyal crocodiles, they have elongated narrow mouth. Now Rajasthan is known for famous pot dance where you have seen a dancer putting number of pots on the head. So with this much of information, we can easily relate ghadiyal with Rajasthan. And Chambal Lake is in Rajasthan. So option B is your answer. And just to give you formal information, there is a famous National Chambal Ghadiyal Wildlife Sanctuary in Rajasthan. We go to the next question, which of the following are famous for sun temples? First I'll take Om Kareshwar. The word Om is usually associated with Lord Shiva. So Om Kareshwar is a Shiva temple. That will straight away cancel option B, C and D. So option A is the right answer. And Arasavali is a sun temple, it is located in Andhra Pradesh. And then Amar Kantak is in Madhya Pradesh. This place is the source of river Narmada, which drains in Arabian Sea. And the next question is, what is the importance of developing Chabar Seaport by India? Let's say you don't know where is Chabar Seaport. Now in the options, the names of the countries that are mentioned are Africa, Arab countries, then Pakistan and Afghanistan. Majority of the countries mentioned in the options are Muslim countries. That means this seaport has to be somewhere in the Persian Gulf. Now among these Muslim countries, with whom India has strong bond? Can you guess? It's Afghanistan, right? We have seen PM Modi and Ashraf Khani together a lot of times. Now Afghanistan is a landlocked country, okay? So to reach there by sea, Pakistan is going to give us trouble. And as it is, they don't like Afghanistan. So we can only depend on Iran, with whom again we have good ties. So Chabar seaport is in Iran. Now blindly option D can be removed because expecting anything from Pakistan is of no use. And if India is interested in developing a seaport of some other country, then definitely there has to be some interest of India. And I believe it has to be with Afghanistan. So option C sounds logical. Let's go to the next question. Which of the following is geographically closest to Great Nicobar? Now Andaman is in north and Nicobar is in south. And Indira Point is at the tip of Great Nicobar and it is also the southernmost point of India's territory. Now Indonesia is closest to Indira Point if you go further south. And if you go right, then Phuket, Thailand comes. Now option D is out of question, take it out. Now Bali, Sumatra and Java are Indonesian names. And Java Sea is a famous sea in Indonesia. So this all gives me a clue that the answer has to be in A or C. Now if you remember the 2004 tsunami, that was generated due to the earthquake that took place in Sumatra Island. 
I mean Sumatra was the epicenter of the earthquake and the effect came directly to India hitting the great Nicobar Island first. That's how I can come to a conclusion that option A is the one. So these were the 10 geography related questions that came in the 2017 Civil Services Paper 1. The whole point of this video was to give you a sense by sharing my perspective as to how I look at the questions and do deductive reasoning in finding the answers. So design your learning in such a way that you can eliminate the wrong options. This way learning will not be monotonous and you will not exhaust yourself. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.